Hey guys, it's Anna. Looks like I'm live now. So I don't know if there's anybody on here watching it live, but if you are, welcome. Um, this is my first Google on air. I figured that this is the best way to do it because um, I was just gonna sit here and have coffee with you and go through a few things. And if you were able to get on, then, um, then great. If you're able to listen to this later, and even better, um, you should be listening to it in your car or you know on your way home or at home when the kids go to bed. Um, that's the that's the goal. And it's I'm not going to inundate you with a bunch of stuff. I just am going to just tell you how I feel, what I do, what I did, how I got through things, and my suggestions and action items for you. So my best thought was to do this in five days and. Um, and kind of break it down like we would, you know, any normal book or training or, you know, you start from one thing and you end up at the, at the end with some action items and, and um, something to take with you. So I want, one, I want to um, welcome you. Um, and I'm going to try and keep these to 30 minutes because I respect your time. And you know what? You don't have to listen to it all at one time. Come back and listen to it in pieces. That's totally fine. This is meant to be completely chill and um, not stressful and not overwhelming at all. So I'm coming to you from my home office. You can see here it's a little bit messy, um, but this was not always my home office. My office was this and was my car and was uh, my, you know, just my everyday life. That this is, I built my business on this, 90% of it. And I'm gonna go through that later in the week. Um, but I wanted to explain to you that this home office has taken me five years uh, to dream up and like, I'm in my own room and I can close the door and it's nothing but beach body stuff. And I mean, I dreamt of that. It's crazy, I know, but I did. And it, it five years, guys, five years. And here it is. So this is, I, I don't want you to compare and go, oh my gosh, I wish I had that. But I want you to use that. If that's something that you just would love, you know, in the future, um, to have an office where you could sit and do beach body and have your calendars up here and have your whiteboards up here and have your fun stuff over here. Um, then do it, then do it. I mean, I watched other people do that for years and, and that's what drove me. And it's like those, those for me, um, those are the things that really kind of pushed me. me my friends hitting elite um, without me were the things that drove me. So that's, um, I just wanted to kind of explain that because I know that some people are like, gosh, I want that office. Don't worry about it, you will get one. But we're gonna start with how to get Path over uh, being overwhelmed. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today, and forgive me, I'm just gonna, I, you know, I've been this this whole um, overcoming uh, being overwhelmed has been a big piece of. Um, I just have been really excited about this because I can't believe how many of you came out and spoke up and and shared what you had been going through and your feelings. I. Um, the reason I asked the question was because that I had a feeling. I, you know, mother hen had a feeling that there were people that were missing and people that had showed up before and that I just missed seeing their face in the group. So while I was surprised with the number of people that responded, I really wasn't surprised because I knew that that, um, I knew that that was what was going on. There were those that um, had come out of the gate running really strong um, and then <clears throat> crickets, like, where were those? Where were you? I, well, I, you know, I missed our conversations. So I commend you for speaking up and sharing. And I, what I want you to, to know, obviously is that you're not alone in these feelings. And the reason why I was so excited about this week is because this week is going to be that clean the slate, um, shake it off and like, okay, I'm ready. Right. Let's. We're gonna have action items and a plan, um, and you're gonna be ready by the end of the week. So, 
I, I, so anyway, so I've been doing a lot of digging deep in my personal development and what kind of reflecting back of when I was working full time and what my days looked like then. And um, if you've ever listened to Jim Rohn, and I want you first to get pause this if you if you need to. Um, go get a notebook because for this whole week, I have a few of them, if you can see a few, and a few post-it notes, and this is how my life, another one, uh, this is how my life, see, overwhelmed, right? I'm over, I'm not overwhelmed, but I got a crap load of stuff. I've got a bunch of pens, I mean, I just, you see what I'm saying? And today I had a, an eye appointment that I forgot about. So it was like, oh, I had this whole day planned out. I'm going to get my workouts in. I'm doing doubles for the first time ever. Did both of them. And then I was like, oh, crap. I have an eye appointment. What do I do? I have to be flexible. So guess what? I was flexible. I went to my eye appointment and I said, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I have to do this later than I expected. And that's just life, right? And you can look at that as being completely overwhelmed and crazy and have I showered yet? No, because my morning was crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the good stuff, okay? Um, now, I know that you are um, completely overwhelmed, right? You, you wouldn't be here if you were. So so what is what is the typical overwhelmed, crazy life look like, right? It can look like what I just described as my morning, or it can look like, what my life looked like before, which is what I'm sure your life looks like right now. And I'm going to go through this, right? You get up, you wake up, you get on your phone, you check Facebook, you check, okay, make sure I don't have any messages, uh, check my team page, check my challenge group. Oh gosh. Okay. It's already time for me to go. Oh, crap. I was I meant to work out. Okay. Shower, get ready, go to work. Um, so you've missed your workout, you've checked Facebook frantically, you, um, you ran out of the house, you forgot to make breakfast, you forgot your Shakeology, and you had to go because you're going to be late to work. So you're driving to work, you get to work, and you, you're crazy busy at work. You, you're just, you know, you've got projects to do, or you've got people to see, and uh, you're in a service business, and you've got, and you, there's no downtime. And then you, um, and then you don't eat lunch, right? You just, I don't, I'm too busy. I don't even have a lunch. And then you're busy at work in the afternoon and you're dragging because you forgot your Shakeology. And then you're, um, and then you get home and then you're lucky to get enough time with your family. Um, and, but you got to get dinner on the table and then, but your house looks like a mess. And then, and then you barely have time to sit with your kids. So you sit with your kids, but you're constantly sitting there and your mind is racing and racing and racing and racing and thinking about all the stuff that you need to do that you didn't do. And here it is eight o'clock at night and you're exhausted and your kids, you know, you want to spend time with your kids, but you can't, cannot be present because you're thinking of all the stuff that you didn't do. Um, you, so, you, so you feel behind. So you put your kids to bed and then you sneak off to the computer and don't let your husband see you. And then you uh, and try and check the team page and check your challenge groups and scroll through Facebook. And then you look at the time and you realize what time it is. And another day, I'm right, I'm looking at my notes because I went through this day. Another day, gone. And did you accomplish anything that you wanted to accomplish? Maybe one or two things, maybe. What I just described to you was a day in the life of me when I was working full time. Crazy busy. Crazy busy. I missed my workouts. I missed my Shakeology. I got home late. Uh, my mind was constantly running about how many things I was missing and what I was missing and I was feeling behind and I wanted to check the team page and I, but I'm too busy and I don't have a lunch. I mean, that was my freaking life. That was it. I just described what a crazy overwhelmed coaches look like. Does it look like that? I'm guessing that your life looks a little bit like that, right? I was just, but, but me as a new coach, I was so afraid to tell people that I was busy. So on Facebook, it would be like, hey, everything's great. Everything's great. And not 
and, and hide the fact that I was busy. And reflecting back, and I did this reflection uh, a few years ago, reflecting, and this is actually, that was the breaking point of my business to where I started to explode, was when I reflected back that it was okay to be busy. There was nothing wrong with being busy, but there's a difference between being busy and being overwhelmed. And so I actually hate the word overwhelmed because you say the word overwhelmed and it sounds stressful. I mean, just to think about it, it's overwhelmed. I got, I got too much going. It's stressful, right? Busy is busy. So if somebody asked me, so my mindset changed from feeling overwhelmed to feeling busy. So if somebody asked me, what, what's your life like? My life is busy. It's great. I wouldn't change it any other way. I'm certainly not bored, right? So there's a difference with saying I'm busy and I'm not bored. That, what I just said, just still described this crazy life. But for you feeling not overwhelmed by saying I'm busy, I wouldn't change it, I am, my life is crazy to being, you know, to, to the difference between being overwhelmed. And it actually shows to the people that you're talking to. So I woke up one day and I realized that by sharing the, by sharing that I was busy and changing the mindset of being overwhelmed, I like held my head higher. I had better conversations. Um, so, so changing the mindset, that's what I wanted. That's what I want to talk about is, is changing the mindset of, of being overwhelmed. Don't ever tell yourself you're overwhelmed. I mean, catch yourself saying, I am busy. I'm busy. Okay, so keep in mind this group is five days long. So we're gonna break this up into pieces. So I, I, of course I could spill it all out now, but I wanna be careful and I really wanna talk about you know, that crazy, crazy life. And if I describe that life, that was my life, I'm sure that you know 90% of you have a very, very similar life, um, if not more busy. You know, at the time I couldn't even get my kids to practices so I wasn't coming home and getting them to practice as well. I was just coming home late. So maybe your life includes that. Maybe your life includes, you know, getting home from work and then taking your kids to whatever practice there is and then getting home and having to make dinner and realizing that your house is crazy. Um, what I want to tell you is that it's okay. It's okay. All of that stuff is okay, right? Stop saying you're overwhelmed. Start saying you're busy. And that's okay, okay? Because there will never be a moment in your life if you quit Beachbody today. Guess what? You're still going to be busy. You're still going to be overwhelmed. You're still going to feel like crap because your life is still the same way it was before. So, and this is where personal development comes in. I mean, here we go. Failing forward which is our book for our Emerald to Diamond group. Uh, Miracles Now. I read 10 minutes of this today. You see where I'm going? The reason why I don't say that I'm overwhelmed is because I dig into personal development and I find a new way to look at it. Once we do that, there's this peace of mind. It's still crazy busy. But there's this peace of mind of feeling like a failure because overwhelm feels like, oh my God, I can't finish it. I am totally failing myself, my family, my house, my life. When you think of it as busy, you're not a failure. You're not a failure. That's it. You're, you're plain and simple, not a failure. So I wanted to go through, I went through a little bit of feeling forward and I wanted, um, actually a couple books, a couple Maxwell books, but I wanted to talk about failure because we just, we just talked about you know, feeling like a failure because your life is crazy busy. So, um, I want you to take a look at what, uh, what are all, what is everything that, that, that like jot it down, write every single thing that you do in a day. Get it all out on paper. 
Take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Write it all out on paper. Pause me. Do that. Write it out on paper. And then, and then look at it. And, and, and pull out a calendar and pull out a, uh, your time event calendar. You know, you can go out of Google and you search um, events, you know, event calendar, appointment calendar. And fill in those times, okay? That putting it on paper makes a big deal. But um, what you've just filled out is is uh, is basically a day in the life of anybody, and not and and you can't fail if you're just like everybody else, right? You can't fail. That's not a failure. So um, I think I have too many notes here. So we're gonna move on to failure. <laughs> This is where a Google Live on air event is um, challenging because I can't pause it and re record. So you're just going to be stuck with me. And that's it. And hopefully you won't turn me off because I will have good things. Um, okay. So crazy live, crazy busy live. I'm going to actually go through time management um, specifically. Give your give you a schedule uh, on another day when we when we're going to talk about specific time management. But I want you to know that you're not alone. That it's not considered failure unless you tell yourself that you're a failure. The average entrepreneur fails 3.8 times before they finally make it, and I can guarantee you that I have failed many many times. And if I I, I used to tell, I had this mentor call uh, once a week, or, uh, once every other week, and um, and I used to tell my mentor that um, if I survived all of the drama that I had in my business, then I will be a huge success. Some of you know the drama that I've gone through in the last five years, and some of you don't. But just know that I have made mistakes, big mistakes. I've trusted people. I have put my heart out there, and my heart has been broken. Um, I Sometimes I go all in and don't think things through, and that bites me in the butt later. Um, so know that I've failed many times, and I think that um, I don't even look at it as failure. I look at it as, as um, just like, oh, being overwhelmed, having a new, being overwhelmed, but change the, the verbiage to I'm just busy. So failure, you know, you got to find a new definition of failure. Failure is learning from your mistakes. I mean, they're mistakes. But it's not failure. If it was failure, then I'd quit. And I swear to God, I could have quit because there was no way that I needed to deal with all this drama when I had a high-paying career and my family that loved me and I didn't need this. But because I wanted it so badly, we're going to talk about that um, tomorrow, um, I had to change the mindset of failure that I was a failure, that this was a failure, that everything was a failure. I had to give it a new definition. And it was, it was, I improved my mistakes. Um, and the mis and mistakes don't define failure. They're actually, I love this, this was in Fail Forward. They're actually, mistakes are actually the price of achievement. So it's like the notch, it's like the stairs. It's like, okay, one more mistake, cool. One more mistake, cool, one more mistake. And you end up succeeding when you make those mistakes. Now, if you sit back and feel overwhelmed, you're not gonna make any mistakes, of course you're not, because you're not gonna do anything, right? So if you say I'm busy, and I don't care if I make mistakes, because everybody makes mistakes, I've made mistakes. And you just notch those in your notches of, your steps to success. So, but 
I do understand that every, this is personal. It's um, your life is personal. Your crazy life is personal. Um, so you have to sit back and reflect on that. And yes, yeah, sometimes you don't have time to sit and read personal development. I will tell you that if you were to leave out one of the things in your day, like your workout or your shakeology or your to make room for personal development, guess what? You will have more time for the other stuff. I guarantee you. This was the, this was the tipping point for me. I de never love to read. I um, whenever I feel crummy, it happens. I know it's hard to fake, but it happens. Whenever I feel crummy, I think of where I'm at, where my mind is at. Why do I feel crummy? Is it because of my leadership? Is, is it something that I did that um, I feel that my, you know, I let my team down? Is it because um, of my own personal fitness journey? Is it because my relationships? Um, I let my husband down. Is it? I have to sit back and think. Why? Why do I feel crummy? And then I pick up a book that's related to that issue. Okay, so this coffee with Anna, this overwhelmed thing, the focus is on feeling overwhelmed, feeling like a failure. So what did I do? I pulled out my failing forward book. What can I share? And you know what? I don't know if I've ever read books covered. I mean, there are definitely some that I've read cover to cover to cover. But this is a book and a lot of John Maxwell's books. I read like one chapter that hits me. Done. Moving on, I feel much better. I'm ready to take on the day. Um, I don't call myself a failure. I don't call myself overwhelmed. Um, my my life is crazy, and that's okay. And then you know what? Honestly, I think that most people told me when I was working full time, I don't know how you do it. And I used to think that that was a bad thing, and actually, it's a compliment because people ask, I don't know how you do it because they wish they could do it. So if your life is, if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I can do it, think of the people that are watching you. If you do it, you will, you will have changed somebody else's life because you did it. So, stop thinking yourself as a failure. Stop saying you're overwhelmed. Learn from your bad experiences. Make those bad experiences good experiences. Let's take, for example, um, a failure. You know, what caused that failure? What, what was it a lack of communication? Did you not follow up with somebody? Um, did you just drop the ball? You know, look at what the failure was. Have you started eating crappy again? Um, Look at what the failure was. And then what were the, what are the successes that came out of it? So for example, like my fitness journey, I have fallen off the wagon so many times, but I don't fall very far. Okay. But it's very easy for me to beat myself up over it about me eating kind of crappy, which, you know, eating kind of crappy, missing my workouts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what's the positive out of that? The positive out of that is that five years ago, I ate even crappier and I missed even more workouts and I was much heavier and I was, so there was actually a success out of me recognizing the fact that I fell off the wagon. So you, so you have to find a success and this is, I always talk about finding a silver lining. Find a success out of every single failure that you come across. If you have gotten so many no's, you haven't sold a thing, you haven't, you know, look back at your conversations, look back at um, your messages, and find the success out of what you have done, right? If you hit Success Club your very first month as a coach and then you didn't the second month, then look at what you considered yourself as failing on, but look at the successes out of it. Holy crap, I hit success on my very first month. Instead of, I hit success on my first month, now I'm a failure. The fact that you hit success on the first month, you should be patting yourself on the back because that is a rarity. Okay, so you always have to find the, 
anything, any single thing that you feel like you fail on, you have to find the the success out of it because there always is. Because you wouldn't be on this call if you weren't striving to improve yourself, your business, your fitness, right? So you've already taken steps. You just sometimes forget those steps that you took, right? But so every single time you feel like crap about what you're doing, you pick up a book, you ask on, on a team page, I feel like this. Does anybody know of a good book? And then you also look at your successes. Okay, so what can you learn from that? So what I, what I taking my example, what I learned from um, eating like crap and, okay, I'm falling off the wagon. What am, I, what am I learning from this situation? The situation I learned is that once I finish a program, I have lacked motivation. So I've learned that. So how do I fix that? Right, so you can see if this is a you are a problem solver. We we discussed this at I think it was at leadership about what makes a good successful coach, and what makes a good successful coach is that you are a problem solver. Okay, if you do not consider yourself a problem solver, I suggest you start looking up ways to solve problems because. That is what makes a successful coach. So this is what I'm going through this little exercise about failure is that you're solving a problem. What was my failure? What were the successes out of it? So I can be okay. I pat myself on the back. It's not horrible. It's better than I thought. And then what can I learn from that? So I learned that I need to be on a schedule. And I learned that I need to be on a schedule with somebody else on the same schedule. Because when I was doing P90X, Five years ago, my husband was on the schedule, and then just recently with um, the Pio Test Group, I had others that I was accountable for or accountable with. Um, my challenge groups don't necessarily keep me accountable. It's others that are in the same boat as me. Maybe you know another coach that you know. Sometimes business just gets in the way, and and I'm going to go through that too. So I know that I need to commit to a, a program and I need to commit to a program with somebody else that's not in my organization, that's not in my, because I don't want to disappoint them. So I realized that I do better that way, right? So I figured that out with my failure. And then, you know, what am I grateful about this experience? Well, I'm grateful because I have the tools to feel better to feel great. I'm grateful for that because if I had this problem and I didn't have those tools, then it would make it even harder. So you have to realize, okay, what am I grateful for this failure? Think about it. What, what, what's the good thing about it? Okay. And then who can help me with this problem, right? So in this example, other people, other coaches, other top coaches that are going through the same thing can help me with this problem. So if you have a problem, if you failed and you're going through objections, you just can't seem to... Okay, so you go through the process. What caused the failure? What are the successes that came out of the failure? What can I learn from that? Uh, am I grateful for this experience, right? And then who can help me with this? Now, you can see that the team page is blowing up these days because there's so much support. So who can help you? Anybody can help you. You just need to reach out. And you and now you also know you're not alone. There is no mystery. You're not alone. Okay. So if you have that question, 10 other people have that question and, or are going through that same failure. And then where do you go from there? So you go from there, you get your help, and then you tweak what you've just done. Because if you're still doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results and getting the same results, what is that called? Insanity. Okay, so you're gonna fix what you what you're gonna tweak it based on those things. So I want you to feel every time you feel like you failed, I want you to go through that exercise, and I want you to become a problem solver. That's what we just did. We just solved our problem, right? And maybe next time we fail again, but we will go through the process and figure it out and how we tweak it again, and it just gets better. So think of it, for five years, I've been problem solving. I've probably solved every problem there could possibly be. And that's why 
it's easy for me to talk about now. It wasn't before because I didn't know. We had no training. I know I say that all the time. We had no training. We had no support. I mean, I had support of Mike Ryan and Kelly Ryan, but we were all floating. You know, we didn't have any tools. And so my goal, my goal has always been give the tools that are necessary to succeed. Don't let people go through the same thing you did. There are things that you have to go through, and that's failure. That's feeling overwhelmed, and that's, you know, that those are just things that you have to go through. Those are the things I can't change or I can't fix from day one because that's a part of being successful. You have to go through those things to be successful. It's just ask anybody that's successful, and you'll see. I'm going to post a couple videos in here because I've got some special guests in here and some, some um, other top coaches that um, I reached out to regarding this um, group and they've shared some, you know, how to, how to overcome being overwhelmed. Now, the reason why is because every successful coach has been in those shoes and it continues to be. Okay, so, uh, Another reason why we feel overwhelmed is because, <laughs> because of the way I built my business, these things, these phones, right? Um, in the old days, we didn't have these phones. So this, we're constantly tied to this thing, constantly. Even though you're at work or whatever, you're constantly tied to those things. So you cannot avoid that. If you want to avoid that, then, then you're, and you can avoid it just naturally, then you're one of the few. But that's one of the other reasons that we feel overwhelmed, that we feel more busy than we've ever felt, is because we're just tied to these things. And sometimes we think that we're tied to it because of beach body, right? And that and I'm sure that you're not alone by thinking that. It's like, I'm on my phone more often because of beach body. I'm on my, you know. Yes, that's true because you've taken on one more thing, but that's not the reason why. The reason why it's just so easy, it's just so easy to be honest. It's just so easy easily accessible and we can't change that we honestly can't change that we can change what we do in our day to work around that and it's not easy it's not easy for me to even to this day I'm forcing myself to get up not look at this thing and go work out before I come do this coffee break. and that's hard for me okay but even today in my daily life being home working full-time as a beach body coach I am busy right? And I don't want to waste any time. Okay. So <clears throat> you're always going to feel, I know that a lot of you feel are feeling behind on things. Um, be okay with feeling busy. Like I said, be okay with feeling behind. It's okay. Guess what? I'm behind. I have my nutrition school. I'm behind in that. I'm doing Darren Hardy's training. I'm behind in that. I haven't looked through all of the Emerald to Diamond stuff. I'm behind on that. So even me, full-time beach buddy coach, I'm behind. My point is you will always feel behind. So stop saying that you're behind. Plain and simple. Stop saying you're behind. Stop saying that you're missing things. You're, you're a brand new coach. You cannot be missing things. The fact that you show up, you're not missing things. This business is not complicated. There are a lot of things, a lot of training, a lot of this, a lot of this. But it's not like something that you have to check every single thing off to be complete. And I know a lot of you type A's. I used to be type A until I realized that I can't be type A because I can't cross everything off. It's just not possible. So be okay with that. Go through a piece at a time. I do two pages here, and then I do two pages here, and then I... Because you can't get it all done. You can't. It's just not possible. So, uh, so be okay with being overwhelmed. Change the way that you think you're busy. That's it. Plain and simple. You're busy. Um, you're not a failure. You make mistakes and you learn from them. You go through the process I just did. Be okay with understanding the reason why I'm busy is because it's in my face 24 seven, right? And, uh, I want to just make sure that I'm not missing anything 
on our agenda. <clears throat> but I'm looking forward to the rest of this week because I've got so many awesome tips and tools and tricks up my sleeve. But today I wanted to just go through um, the mindset of, you know, it's just this whole, I'm crazy, it's just crazy busy. And okay, so we went through what your crazy life looks like. I hope that you were, um, that I was dead on because I know I was because it was my life. The mindset of failure, why we are overwhelmed and why it's okay to be overwhelmed. Okay, so I hope that you, um, you've kind of like settled into this. Okay, it's okay for me to feel overwhelmed. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but she's telling me it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to fail. Okay, I don't like to fail. I don't want to fail, but she's telling me it's okay to fail. And it's okay to be overwhelmed. Just call yourself busy because she's overwhelmed. <laughs> she's busy. Okay, so we're, we've eased our mind today, and then... Tomorrow, we talk about how we push forward after kind of feeling like, all right, I can do this. I can do this. Okay. So tomorrow, we're going to go talk about our why um, and what it is and why it is that we, our mind gets clouded of what our why is and really kind of break it down. And I'll go through... Um, the, basically the process of what I first started as a coach to where I'm at now and my why and 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 why we're spending a whole day on a why. Um, and then day three will be time management and that will be a day in the life of give me a darn schedule so I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. So day, that'll be day three and day four we will knock it out, give you direction. Uh, day five, some more goals and action items. But today I just wanted to say you're not alone even once I've met my goal and I was home it's still busy but I'm okay with that because guess what I'm still living the life that I want to live okay I made a ton of sacrifices and I will go through that when we talk about our day in the life of I made a ton of sacrifices and it's very hard to see that now especially if you're a brand new coach because what you're seeing is something that took five years to get to, okay? But I'm going to leave you with this. I want you, and I, and I talked to Jeremy about this last night. I want you to think of your life five years from now. I want you to think of your life five years ago. What did your life look like five years ago? Like, seriously, sit, shut this down, close your eyes. What did my life look like five years ago? Okay, what, am I, what does my life look like now? Crazy busy, or you wouldn't be in here. What does my life look like five years from now? It's very hard to do, okay? How old will you be? And as we, as we moms do, how old will our, will our kids be? Because, you know, we do mom math. How old will our, will our kids be? How old will I be? And what does that look like for me? And chances are you don't know. And that's why we're doing this exercise because tomorrow we'll talk about it. And, um, and I hope that's helpful. And again, it's just me hanging out. I did have my coffee. I haven't had a sip of it, but my afternoon coffee. Um, I want you guys, once you watch this to, um, post your feedback below. I want this to be productive. So I want you to post any takeaways, Hopefully you have some. If you don't, be honest. You know? And then the great thing about it is this is live next the next few days. So if there's anything um, that I said that I went through today that you had questions on or that you want me to dive deeper into, I would be more than happy to. I am not putting a time limit on this. You guys have as long as you want to catch up on this. There's no assignments. There's no nothing. But I want to address everything and all of your concerns by the by Friday. So going through what I went through today, um, please share your feedback. Please share your questions. Please share your aha moments or something that's come up that fits today's topic so we can discuss. All right. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And tomorrow morning, I'm working out doubles again. 
which is a, again the first time ever because guess why I always told myself when I was working full-time I watched people I watched and I don't know if it, some of you know these the, the Frenches the Frenches would get up in the morning they drink their coffee then they work out and then they work out again and I'd be like at, at work man I want to do that I want to I want to work out all the time. Guess what? I've been home for a year and I have not done it. So I have no damn excuse. I sit and I work. And I have so much fun working that I don't go work out. And that's the truth. So I'm focused because this is stupid. I have the time. I'm going to get up, do my doubles, and come sit down and have coffee with you. And I don't have an eye appointment tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I hope that this was, again, my first time on the Google On Air. You know, it wasn't perfect, but neither am I. Ha! All right, guys. Bye.